Ad handling at scale requires a combination of millions of requests, rapid bids, and serving the ads themselves. Join us as we talk to Unity about how they've built out their ad system on this episode of Stack Chat. Thanks for joining us, TJ. Tell us a little bit more about what Unity does. Thanks, Mark. Unity it builds a high-definition 3D real-time graphics rendering engine, and it's used in uh, game development platforms, as well as a variety of other applications like automotive, architecture, and film. On the game development side, we have a number of backend services to support uh, game publishers. Uh, in particular, uh, the part I'm involved in is monetization, and we have uh, in-app purchase services, as well as ad services. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about how the architecture actually supports all of the ad requests that come in for a game. So uh, we get about uh, tens of thousands of ad requests a second, um, so it's pretty high volume. And those all go into a, a public GKE cluster. And that service also makes bid requests to third parties at the rate of about a million a second. And those requests are all public IP addresses so that we can get uh, good performance going to those uh, bidders. Um, we had tried it on outbound NAT, and that didn't work as well. Uh, additionally, we have a private GK cluster where all of our support services run uh, for security reasons. Um, and they're only, that cluster is only accessible internally. Um, and we also have uh, virtual machines that are running a variety of databases that also provide support for our ad network. Uh, additionally, we have data that's going into NATs and Kafka for hitting other parts of our system. And we have uh, logging going to Stackdriver. What are some of the other parts of the system that Kafka sends the data to? So we, other th parts of the system are billing, uh, business intelligence, and some of the machine learning systems that make uh, uh, training models that are used for uh, making decisions at various stages within our ad network. So was this architecture built natively on GCP, or was it migrated from somewhere else? We migrated from another cloud provider into GCP about a year ago. And uh, in the prior environment, we had a lot of services that were on bare virtual machines. We had some sh services in Kubernetes. We had a variety of different CI, CD uh, processes. So early on in the migration process, we did some engineering work to figure out how we were going to migrate our services. We wanted to have a consistent uh, CID, C, CI, CD pipeline uh, for all of our services in GCP. And so we, a lot of the pre-work was to upgrade the uh, CI CD pipeline for all of our services to be standardized. And that pipeline also supported the GCP migration. Additionally, getting the ad serving component migrated over um, required uh, solving a couple of technical problems around DNS and just the volume of traffic that we had. So now that you've got all this up and running in GCP, are there any changes that you would make or if you could go back, would you do anything differently? Uh, we're pretty happy with the structure we have in GCP right now. Uh, being on a standardized uh, CI-CD pipeline has been really helpful for us. Uh, it makes it easy to deploy new services. We have a process for doing that. Um, in particular, changes that we're making are migrating towards uh, managed database services like BigQuery and, and dropping some of our more customized database systems. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and telling us a little bit about how you built the ad request network. Great to be here, thanks. Check out this deep dive on building an advertising platform on Google Cloud Platform. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. We'll see you next time on Stack Chat.